think I'm in the middle. Yeah. Oh, shoot, we're both wearing gray. It's fine. Is this gray or green? It's green. No, it's not. It's gray. Can you tell? <laughs> Look at that. Just squint your eyes and tell me we're not wearing the same color. It's true. <sighs> is it green or is it gray? It's a dark gray. Thank with you. With some uh, green tones. There is some green. Look. I know there's a little bit of green thread going through, but it's gray in general. Why do I perceive it as a dark green? I don't get it. You pick out the it's, tiniest little detail okay. and you think it's that. The whole it's thing. weird because if I look at the screen and I see your color, I can tell. Yeah. But wait, even if I see your color, it has this green hue still. I can't tell if you're colorblind or if you just perceive the world differently. What do you think is colorblind? <laughs> <laughs> so, hi guys, we're back with another Dear Sadie MP. Um, so today we have two letters, which we should have gotten to a long time ago. One of them is from October and one of them is from November, so I do apologize. So let's start with the one from October. I found myself in a terribly steamy crush, probably just on my end, but I also can't be sure. This past summer, I worked at a summer camp and one of my colleagues is an older woman in her early 50s, a retired teacher. Looking back, I realized moments of her showing interest in me but always kept it professional. I noticed her saying hi to me in the parking lot before work, always chatting me up our, on our walks to the parent pickup point, but really didn't think much of it. One afternoon as camp ended, she asked me about coming out and I explained my experience to her and she didn't have much to say afterwards. At the time, I didn't think much of all this. And by the end of the program, we exchanged social media which she looks at almost religiously, but I've noticed her holding back from doing as much, which makes me think she's moving on. Anyhow, we had a reunion dinner in September, and I sat at one of the tables, and she sat next to me. I was hot all evening and trying to act normal, but once during the dinner, my hand brushed her upper outer thigh, and she didn't move away. It was electrical and stunned me. Neither of us said anything. That night, as we left the dinner, she invited me to a friend's craft night that she goes to. She told me she really hoped I could make it since she was going on a long trip soon. And I went. That night was strange and magical. I still have it stuck in my brain. I was awkward at first, but I love her ability to disarm my reserved nature with her outgoing, carefree, older woman suaveness. <laughs> the night she mentioned how she is unable to have children and how that was a huge problem with her ex-husband. Mentioning this information made me think she was subtly trying to tell me something, but I can't tell if she's straight or bi. So the rest of the night progressed with her getting more inebriated. I was sober. As that happened, she got more touchy being near me, and when everyone went inside from the deck later, we all gave each other massages. And I'm pretty sure she slapped my ass because I talked about it earlier in the night. <laughs> After that, we all winded down and left. I haven't seen her since that night. I want to see her again and talk to her face to face because she won't text me back and send me the pictures she took of me that, that, that night. It's really confusing and I don't know what to say or how to make it known to her that I'm not to play around with and that I have feelings for her. Thank you so much for what you do. Take care. So, we're a little bit late, but what are your thoughts? My thoughts is to just tell her. It's the, the same, you know? advice over again sometimes I say no don't say <laughs> so and you I think she's wrong. interested the older woman I don't know but don't the know. slapping the ass thing is really interesting to me <laughs> because it's a very like closeted gay thing I think I don't know because sometimes you know there are people who don't even they're not in touch with their what they really feel they feel mm -hmm. something but they're not in touch with that so they do things but they don't even know why hmm. you know that was me that was me <laughs> when I didn't know I was gay and I was slapping everybody's butt <laughs> only girls but you know <laughs> so maybe that's it so maybe she is bi but she's out of touch with that exactly part of herself she's not conscious exactly of it so how would you approach that? How would I approach that? I would tell her. I would tell her. Just tell her your feelings. Tell her how you feel. I feel like that might scare her away though if she's not out to herself. I mean, you have to know how to tell her, okay? <laughs> There's ways and ways, okay? But my, I feel like you should come out and tell her your feelings. Otherwise, how do you know how this is going to... 
I so, feel like what you should do, or what I would do, is take her out to dinner mm -hmm. to a place where she will consume alcohol. Because, you know, drinks are courage and truth serum all mixed in one. Uh, and then... What if she doesn't drink alcohol? She said she got drunk at the party. Oh, okay. Crafts so. night? You, went, you go to do crafts. So if I, you I drink, you so. know. <laughs> I remember that detail. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Um, and then make a move, but like very subtle move, a move you can kind of backtrack if things go bad, like like touching her hand a little bit, you know, that's very sensual I feel like, <laughs> and if somebody's totally straight, they'll kind of pull away, Yeah. if they're not, you know, they'll stay there, <laughs> and then, you know, it's those subtle things where you can feel the chemistry more, and then you can tell her. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a that's, that's your way. Isn't that what worked with you? Ah, ah, ah <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Whatever happened, tell us. We are very curious to know. So let's go on to the next letter. Do you want to read this one or should sure. I? Sure. Okay, dear CDP, I'm in love with a woman who has a seven-year-old child, but for me, it's not an issue. She's my colleague. When I first met her, I felt like I've known her for a long time. We became friends, maybe, because at the moment she was broken because of her past abusive relationship. She has no one to talk to. Second, she's away from her family. By the way, we are both working in UK. For the past 10 months, I've known her so much. Uh, we always communicate and hang out together with her child. Which for me, my love for her is getting deeper and deeper. I decided to tell her what I feel for her, which I know she's straight and she knows that I'm a lesbian. I wrote her a letter and she's reading it with in, in, in my presence. Her response is, she hugged me and said, I love you, but sorry, I'm not gay. I distanced myself from her because it was clear in my mind that she rejected me and she didn't want me but she still kept communicating with me, still inviting me over her place and always said that her daughter missed me and she wanted to see me. And because I love her, I still keep seeing her in spite of the, reject the rejection. When we see each other, she allowed me to kiss her, hug her and hold her. It's been one year and 10 months now, but I'm struggling because I feel like, you know, hanging on the air without destination. I'm so confused. I plan to resign from my work and go back to my country to forget her. Hope you can help me with some clarity for my mind, more power. Have a great day. Love you both. Ooh. That's tough. Yeah. I feel your pain on that one. I've had crushes yeah. on straight women all the time. Yeah, and me too. And I had exactly kind of like the same experience. Tell us. And I think I told already. Tell it again. Tell it. <laughs> <laughs> we're, that, we're becoming the old couple who keeps saying the same story over and over <laughs> again. Yeah, so I had a crush for this woman, five years older than me, and she was a former colleague. We were, were not working in the same office, we were working with, for the same institution. We met at a party that was given for by the same institution. So that's how we met and uh, I developed, you know, I mean, not deep feelings, I should say, but I, you know, I liked her, I was attracted to her. And then finally I uh, confessed that I was attracted to her and that she was super nice, super duper nice. She really loved my friendship, you know, she loved me, but not in the same way. And, uh, and she rejected me um, because she said, look, I am not a lesbian. I like you, but I cannot be any more than a friend to you. Mm -hmm. So that hurt. And I also distanced myself. But you see, the di and the she called me, she was crying, you know, I'm sorry, I hurt you, uh, please. Uh, she was super afraid that she lost me as a friend. Yeah. And then I reassured her that she didn't lose me as a friend that I needed that time to heal. And, uh, and then everything went back, you know, to where it was after a while I got over myself and uh, we stayed friends, basically. Um, the problem with, you know, having a crush on a straight woman is straight women can have really close platonic friendships. Mm -hmm. They can hug, they can cuddle. Yeah. It's very confusing if you're gay 
and if you're having this kind of closeness from a straight woman it can yeah. almost feel like maybe they are gay like maybe they're secretly but they didn't accept themselves but they can just be straight yeah i remember uh you know back in high school i had a close friend she was my best friend at the time and she was the one who would initiate things like holding my hand or like holding my arm when we walk and i didn't know i was gay at the time but i really loved the physical closeness right and after i came out i felt so awkward around her because i felt like you know there's so much physical closeness that we have but she's never going to you know be in like a lesbian relationship with me mm-hmm. and that can be really sad yeah. you can't hold on to that the the thing though in this particular case yeah. uh, is that uh, she said that she's holding her so they hug the kiss and stuff so this makes things much much harder and yeah. then i get it it's almost like uh, can we say giving blue balls constantly yeah <laughs> you know i mean it's not fair from that perspective maybe she doesn't understand it's hurtful because yeah. it's almost like uh, keeping a hope there that it's not in, uh, where where there is no hope in the end so you're stuck in between uh, this illusion of a hope and there is uh, a realistic uh, uh, awareness that there is no hope and you are stuck right in between yeah so the fact that you want to resign and get away from this situation i think it's healthy unless you find another solution that you know doesn't make you resign if you want to you know stay in uk distancing yourself is the best option yeah. at this point yeah it's really painful right and it's almost like having half like half of your needs are being met by being so close with this person but the, the, there's the other half of your needs that are never going to be met right and it's like you said like having blue balls all the time and it's not just sexual it's also emotional you mm, know in exactly. a relationship you crave that emotional depth and maybe the commitment romantic whatever and mm. all of that is never going to be met so right. the healthiest thing is really to set yourself free and i'm sorry about the little girl but you know she, kids get over things much faster than grown ups so yeah. she'll have to kind of get over that loss yeah and she can't use her daughter to kind of emotionally blackmail you mm-hmm. into come back we miss you yeah you need to move on Wow, we rarely say that. We're always like, go for it. Yeah. But if when they're straight, they're straight. Like yeah. you can't do much about that. Exactly. It sucks. Yeah. So that's all of the letters. We actually finally got through them. Yes. Thank you again everybody for writing to us. We really appreciate reading all these stories and uh, just uh, giving our two cents. <laughs> bad advice. <laughs> giving our bad advice. Sometimes it's good, but no, I mean, um, yeah. So, yeah. by the way, as you're watching this, we're probably flying to Toronto right now. But it like you're so nice to say that. <laughs> I don't know. I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> the next video you see will be from Toronto and let us know what you want to see. Um we're not going to do vlogmas because we want to kind of enjoy being there. Yes, not just worry about filming everything. Right. But I can try vlogging more if you guys want to see more vlogs in December. It can be like a kind of vlog mess I guess. Right. So, yeah, let, let us know what you want to see in the month of December cuz lately it's all been dear Sadie and P. Yeah, you know, sure. we can switch it up a little bit. All right. We'll see you next time. We love you. Bye. Bye. Ah! Did you hear that? <laughs> Are you still cold? Yeah.